Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson. We continue our My Five series, delving into the roots and the influences of photographers and people who work in photography. And today, we have Bill Chapman with us, who is a Boston-based photographer. Bill, welcome to The Crit House. It's nice to have you on. Thank you, sir. It's great to be here. Yeah, it'll be fun. So Bill's five images come from Walker Evans, Margaret Bork White, Ernest Withers, Julio Cortez, and Maury Gordemiller. It is uh, very nice to have you on, Bill Chapman. So um, you uh, you have been a Boston area photographer for a while, but I I don't really know that much about your background. Tell us uh, tell us about like who you are photographically and where you have been, uh, so that we know a little bit more about you. Yeah, I've actually been a photographer for 55 years, and I had my first show 49 years ago. Wow. Um, I, in high school, I snuck my parents' camera out of the house and photographed Simon and Garfunkel and The Who. And, and my father was a photographer, but he stopped, and there was a dark room in my house. So I picked up on that right away. And... Uh, after high school, I majored in English for a while, skipped that, and went to Mass College of Art. Gus K. Office was my first instructor. And um, after that, I've been at it ever since. I've never had uh, a full-time job as a photographer. I always had another job so I could skip the weddings and the bar mitzvahs and the dogs and the cats and the little kids. So that's the way I worked my life. Great. So you have chosen now five images uh, to uh, to talk about here in the My Five series. Was that, uh, what did you go through? Like, what was your thought process about choosing those five? Well, I have lots of influences, like all of us, uh, that don't have to do with photography. But initially, when I got to Mass Art, I knew nothing of photography. And there happened to be a Walker Revan show at the MFA. And... I started to learn about these photographers. He, he was my first influence, and I photographed a lot of baseball. I grew up near Fenway Park. Uh, the bus was a nickel. It was 50 cents <laughs> to get in. My dad would give me a buck and be rid of me for the afternoon, and I'd be down <laughs> at Fenway Park. So I went on to do what I had always wanted to do. I hit every major league park. And then wow. I saw, yeah. I started on the minors and I worked for the Pawtucket Red Sox for a while. And um, I saw a show of Negro League photographs by Ernest Withers at Panopticon Gallery. And I flipped. I could have done backflips in the gallery. Wow. Um, I knew a lot about the Negro Leagues. I knew the trouble that Boston had with segregating, particularly the Red Sox. Yeah. Um, I actually saw Pumpsy Green, who was the first person they allowed to play with them. I saw him play, et cetera. And Ernest impressed, his photographs impressed the daylights out of me. I studied about him. I got to see a lot of his photographs. And then in 2002, I had occasion to go to Memphis with uh, the Pawtucket Red Sox, and that's where he was located. I called him up on the phone, and he said, well, come on over. As your viewers may or may not know, he was one of the most noted uh, African-American documentary photographers of the last century. He started photographing in the very late 40s. He had a business. He photographed all the civic events. He photographed musicians. And the first picture ever of B.B. King he took, he also became friendly with Elvis before Elvis became the nationwide Elvis. And here's a photograph that Ernest took of Elvis with um, two of Ernest's sons. And I picked this because uh, I did a whole series of Elvis is a fetish commodity photographs and uh, spent a lot of time with Ernest going here and there. He showed me where he went to high school, where Elvis went to high school. It was a whole learning experience. Um, I'd say it's probably the most important five years of my life um, because I learned so much about his approach to things and the danger he put himself in. 
He did a lot of civil rights stuff. If you've ever seen the photograph of the gentleman holding the I am a man sign, that's Ernest. That's the one that most people are familiar with. Yep. But um, he was represented by Panopticon Gallery, so I got to spend time with him there. And once I spent time with him that one time in Memphis, I kept going back. And he took me with him everywhere. And uh, and then he became ill, and he passed away in 2007. Uh, but I'm still helping with his archive and with the Ernest Withers Foundation. Um, I've had exhibits with his work. I own a lot of his work. Um, and, and he's probably been the major influence, even though I don't copy his style. I just psychologically, uh, I became attuned to what was real documentary photographer through yeah. him. You had mentioned seeing a Walker Evans show when you were a youth at the, uh, I think you said the MFA, and here we have a Walker Evans image for you as well as one of your My Five as well. Yes, when I got to Mass Art, I, I could photograph well and print, um, but I didn't know you could do things like this with a camera. Um, it really had an impact on me. Uh, I mentioned one a comic book artist, Ernie Chua, who used to draw Batman and some other things. But Ernie went out of the frames with things. He went out with fists and capes. And this was a derivation of that. This has also been called the first piece of pop art, which I guess you could uh, argue about. But this and then all of his other things had a market influence on me um, all, all through, especially in college. Um, and Walker Evans, I mean, he set a style which people say he took from Edward Hopper, um, the painter. He didn't know his work would be revered like it was um, and still is uh, because he was just doing it. There was no great acclaim until let us now praise famous men, which was the first book he was published in. Your uh, your uh, third image is from Margaret Bork White. Tell us about why this is here for you, sir. I think this is the best image ever made. It was made in the 30s during the Depression. Yes. It says so much about America then and America now. Um, she was a, a brilliant photographer. She did lots and lots and lots of things isn't really recognized today. There's never been a major retrospective. There's never been a major book. This just has an impact on me. I have I have a poster of it framed on my wall. I mean, I think oh. about this a lot. So I hope someday somebody puts it all together. But this, this is the keynote for me. This is the keystone, uh, my Rosetta Stone of photography. Yeah, it's a, what it, it represents. Absolutely. It, it is an amazing image. And I'm surprised because, I mean, I, I, I have... I think of Margaret Bork White as being sort of in that that loftiest of the pantheon of American photographers, and I wasn't aware that there wasn't a a a, a complete retrospective or a, an anthology of her work. That that does seem like it's a big miss. Somebody should do that. Yeah, You're correct. Yeah, she did time life stuff. She hung out of an airplane and did mountains. Um, she was she was about the world. I mean, she traveled a lot of places. But she certainly covered America extremely well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so now we're coming into a more modern period of time with uh, this image from Julio Cortez. Tell us about this, sir. Yeah. Julio Cortez is a present day photographer. He's based out of um, Minnesota. This was a riot after the George Floyd verdict came down. Um, I've always loved documentary photography and documentary photography that's perfect. I mean, this is the perfect photograph. If you look at the corner of the flag where he has the bottle in his hand, a tenth of a second later or a tenth of a second earlier, that would not not have been the same picture. Yeah. It's all perfectly composed, yeah. perfectly exposed. And I think about photographs like this all the time I hadn't seen this image until you sent it, and then I've spent some time with it since uh, since we've been first talking. And it's it it is just a a stunning image with the flames framing the flag, the upside down flag, and you're right about the bottle being there. Um, and then just 
it's it, just every part of the frame there's something to be able to look at and yet it's a fairly simple image so um thank you thank thanks for sending this one as well i keep thanking you for the images but it's uh, it's great to see and great to talk about and uh so this is the one this is the one that <laughs> I, I find amusing. Maury Gordon, is it Gordon Miller? Is that pronounced? Have I ever pronounced it right? Uh, Gordon Miller, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so talk about this one and why this is one of your influences. Well, he did a book of uh, photographs that attached themselves to biblical phrases. And this just happened to be one of them. I don't, I don't remember the phrase. I don't have it with me. But he does really, really abstract things that I never would have thought of in my life. Um, he's Southern. Uh, most of his images are taken in the South. And, and um, let me just, and let me just, just make sure up, I, I understand what this is. So this is just, is this a bunch of cheese? Uh, yeah, it's a bunch of processed cheese that he yeah, made okay. into a cross. Single single slice, sliced cheese in a cross. Okay, thanks. I yeah, just wanna, I, wanna make sure I knew what I was looking at. <laughs> Yeah, I can't tell you whether it was Kraft or Velveeta, but um, <laughs> maybe it makes a difference. I don't know. <laughs> his his book is really hard to find now, but a lot of these things are startling, and it isn't the kind of thing I do or really could come up with. Um, I'm fascinated with Southern art, but again, this is not something. Um, I mean, like I said, I have a lot of influences, and this just happened to be something I think about. Like I said, I, I could never come up with something like this and wouldn't want to. It's not it's not where I find my strengths, but um, certainly uh, it moves me and the rest of the stuff in the book does too. Is Bill Chapman, it's a, a, a wide variety of images that you've presented to us. Um, and like I, like I said before, it is just, it's such an interesting thing to see where people's influences are. Um, because I, several of those, I would not have guessed or seen how it, it came. So I was uh, happy to have that conversation about where you were influenced. Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've been at this 55 years one way or another. Um, I rude the day when film wasn't practical anymore. But it has <laughs> made a difference. When you shoot baseball in the old days, you had three cameras because you only had 36 frames. And you couldn't stop in the middle and say, hey, wait, I know you hit a home run, but wait there till I change the film. And right, uh, right. digital, of course, I really don't shoot baseball anymore, except to do portraits of the Negro Leaguers that still survive. I had an exhibit of that at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute last year. And I also photographed the Harlem Gospel Choir. Um, I photographed them in New York 25 times. So I had a show at the Multicultural Multipurpose Arts Center in Cambridge last year as well. So I do different things. And then as things come up that interest me, I study them as much as I can. Um, so I'm not a novice when I go up, can I take your picture, mister? You know, um, I don't do that. And I always talk to people in my portraits before I shoot them. I don't jump up out of the blue and it makes a better portrait that way. And I get to meet somebody. So yeah, it's good to, it's good to I, know who you're talking to before you talk to them. I think they, I think people right. appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. Especially nowadays when people are popping up everywhere with a camera. Yeah. Right. And um, it makes for a better portrait. It makes for a conversation. Yeah. Which is the two things my photography brings me to usually. Well, Bill Chapman, it has been a pleasure talking to you on the Crit House. Thanks for joining us. And thank you all for watching the Crit House. And thank you, Jeff. This has been great.